Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Lepresti represents House District 41. He's running against Brian Jeremiah for that seat. Okay, before we get to the issues, I just need to address this. Things got a little contentious a little early on with the race. There were accusations of a confrontation. Before we go, without going into a play-by-play, -play, just how are things resolved and are we moving forward peacefully and professionally? Uh, thanks for being out here and happy Aloha Friday. Uh, you know, I hope it's been resolved. The judge granted a temporary restraining order against him and I hopefully it doesn't happen again. Uh, but I'm more interested in talking about the issues that are important to the people's daily lives and have a uh, traffic, AC yeah. in the schools, things like that. Well, well then let's start with traffic. We'll, we'll okay. start with that situation. Obviously, this is going to help. This is going to help. This is creating more jobs. People are going to be staying on this side of the island. Rail will be coming eventually, but that's going to take some time. How do you create, uh, I don't know if it, it starts with creating more jobs, but how do you alleviate some of that congestion on a daily basis? Well, you're right. It, it takes jobs because so many of us are fighting each other to get into, into town that the more jobs we have out here, the more professional jobs and service jobs, the less cars on the road. That's why I've supported the Capital Jobs Initiative mm -hmm. to try to enhance more jobs out here. Yeah, what kind of jobs are we talking about? We're talking so about professional jobs, yeah. uh, in the, not just the service industry, but professional jobs. 60% of the state's workers mm -hmm. live out here in West Oahu, and yet most of us have to commute into town. There's available places where we can build more state buildings for those people to work mm -hmm. all right uh, obviously one of the big concerns too was was the schools out in this district Campbell High School they're overcrowded the classrooms are hot yeah. uh, we are getting the money and we are going to be building those ACs uh, how much more of an effort needs to be done not only to get them actually into the classrooms but also to get more classrooms great question. funding that's a great question you know uh, when I ran for this office my first term in office uh, I ran on a platform to get AC in the schools and we got a hundred million dollars with the help of the governor and the legislature to cool the schools. People tried to get that for 20 years and did it in my first term. Um, so the DOE has to install that now. Uh, you know, part of the job now is to oversee that they're able to do this and that they're not being overcharged by people if that's happening and to make sure that the kiki are served. Yeah. Uh, we also got $12 million for a new classroom over at Campbell High School. We need more. Uh, we need a new high school, uh, but we're making progress. The, the schools are going to be cooler. We're going to have more classrooms, and eventually we'll have a new school. You know, we talked about traffic, and we talked about the creation of more jobs. I mean, that itself could also take more time. There are, there's been talk about contra flows and, and just doing stuff structurally on the roads themselves to try and maybe create a better flow going into town and coming back during rush hour traffic. And is, are those some of the things that you support? Or what, Absolutely. What kind of so, I mean, uh, so I'm the vice chair of transportation right. in, in the House, and, you know, some of the things that DOT has been done has, has been really good. They've expanded okay. the uh, zipper lane. They've expanded the shoulder lanes for use uh, to town and back. Uh, they just finished the new lane for the westbound. Right. We need uh, to get some more money to make a new eastbound lane on the H1. You know, these are the kinds of things that I'm working on every day at the Capitol. Okay, a number of residents uh, feel that they were, um, I guess, cheated by Haseko with that lagoon as opposed to the marina that they were promised. A lot of yeah. people spent a lot of money. Where do you stand on that issue? That does more need to be done to to alleviate that and well, tell the homeowners? You, you may not know, I'm the lead plaintiff in the lawsuit against okay, Haseko, yeah. and I'm one of those people that was cheated um, by them, as many thousands of my neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, in a court of law, it was found that they had engaged in deceptive and unfair trade practices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to ask ourselves as a society, when that happens, what's the just restitution that should be given to the people? I mean, largely everybody hopes that the developer will actually produce what they're promising or something close to what they're promising, uh, but they keep backtracking. It's hard to really there, trust. There were environmental concerns, though. Yeah, but those were all, all, all set aside, and, and they had already cleared all those hoops uh, since, I think, the 90s. So yeah. they've just been sitting on this since 2009 without doing anything. And a couple of years later, they announced they're not going to do the lagoon, but they were still selling it. Um, I mean, trust and, and un trust really is a factor. Yeah. Uh, they're the kind of developer that gives developers a bad name, unfortunately. All right, Matt Lepresti representing State House uh, District 41. Thanks for your time.